We are the welcome, welcome time. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done there. Oh, let's, keep, let's, keep, let's keep this in. Let's keep this in. It makes <sighs> us more. Hello. Welcome to the Wasting Time podcast. Welcome to go. the Wasting Time Pass podcast. I think that's what I was trying to say. Ah, sorry about that. That's all right. We all know you're out I'm, of practice. Uh, it's Friday. I'm full of cold and I'm out of practice. So, yeah, it's <laughs> like, yeah. How are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm I'm in good spirits because, as you say, it's uh, at time of recording the Friday afternoon. This is, I think this is a good episode that listeners are going to enjoy. Um, yeah, looking forward to the weekend ahead. I just got myself uh, Bleachers tickets for their Kingston show, so I'm pleased about yeah, that. Yeah, I did see that because it fell into our uh, group inbox. Yeah, I had to do that because I didn't realise on the limited. Banquet Records on the Banquet Records website because so, I was getting one for myself and one for my wife, and you you could only get one per person. So I quickly created another account for her. She was in a meeting. I was on the phone to our friend Rob from Elvana at the same time. And I was just oh. like, right, I can't use her email in case she needs to verify it. So I just used our wasting time one for that. So that's why Fair that enough. came through. And I'm yeah. assuming that sold out pretty quickly then. I, if, if it hasn't by now, it must have already nearly sold out because they, they're doing two that night and the other one was long sold out and they've just added it like a late afternoon one. So we're, and it's we're a small, small venue though ish for, for, for bleachers it's quite small yeah it's the it's the one of the bigger venues in kingston but it's where they get all the where banquet records get all the big big uh artists to come and play so that's exciting we good? yeah yeah really looking forward to that yeah thanks for the invite <laughs> hey mate <laughs> it was it was very hard just getting it sorted for me and her let alone uh getting friends from the other end of the country to come down uh, it's all right yeah yeah it's a bit of a journey these days um yeah um but yeah you got men's singers this weekend right yeah men's singers this weekend Ho- well hopefully this episode will be coming out later today but most people will probably listen to it during or after the weekend so that gig's probably already happened if you're listening to this episode but yeah yeah got that yeah. uh i know you're hoping to see them next week as well so thursday Menzingers- yeah Thursday, yeah, yeah. Menzing is a band I've seen so many times, but it's always a good thing. Yeah, I have so many friends who are into them, so it's always a fun time when they come through London and lots of us go. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get to arms length last night, unfortunately, on account of not feeling um, too great. Um, Fair but enough. my brother did go, so who I'm meeting for a pint um, after after we do this. So I'll, oh, we'll, nice, um, nice. I'm sure he'll tell you all about that. I'll find out how that was. Cool. Um, I know that you're limited for time, so we'll kind of we won't keep this intro too long. Um, there's lot. I hate to sound like Tom DeLonge. I almost said big things coming with wasting time. You know, that's what Tom DeLonge always would say with Angels and Airways. I'm, I don't want to fall yeah. into that trap, but we do have a few things we've lined up this year that we're excited about. We haven't hopefully. actually talked about when we're when we when we're going to talk about that stuff out as well. So we probably need to. Yeah, when, yeah, we do, we do. We, um, we, yeah, uh, exactly. Won't be able to. Plans. Yes, exactly. Um, so we'll find out when we can announce some of that stuff. So anyway, before we get into today's episode, we we thought it might be a fun new feature. We'll see how this works. We're trying this because um, obviously, what happens in a lot of these intros is I will. I mean, it happens the other way around sometimes, but normally, more often than not, I will say, "Oh, Nick, I've." I'm enjoying X new song this week and you won't have had a chance to listen to it. And then I'll just say what I think. Kill two it. birds. Yeah. And let's just like do it in the moment. We thought we would play a new song and then get Nick's reaction to it. So I've, I've brought a song by someone who is actually kind of linked to the podcast. Cause uh, Kyle Devlin, who's in game time has always followed us and messages us, likes our posts um so we're kind of it's someone with we're sort of connected to and i noticed game time put a new song out last week so i thought you know game time's music's normally really good i i've heard it i like it so i thought why don't we do uh that is our first one yeah so game to game time being around a while scott sellers of rufio fame yeah yeah so so they've got scott sellers on this track yeah there was one they released in late i think 2022 with peter munters on as well so they're certainly connected yeah. with with that kind of scene, you know. Self released as well. Yep. Game time music. Yeah, I'm just gonna one second. Just have a little look and see 
when their earlier stuff is from. Oh, yeah, look. So 2002. So I guess they were playing shows with some of these bands. That's why they've got like Scott and Peter on tracks and stuff. Yeah, go a long way back. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's get this rolling. Good intro. Here, Scott Sellers. Yeah. Definitely got a little bit of a kind of Rufio, Rufio vibe, but with a bit more of a Definitely. pop funk, pop funk kind of influence. Yeah, it's cool, man. Is that enough, do you think? Yeah. So, so. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, yeah, it's a good sound. Get a, definitely get like a Rufio stroke kind of poppier, newfound glory kind of crossover vibe. Yeah, yeah, I feel they're from that world. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend going away and listening to the whole song in your own time. It's kind of like the middle eight. It's pretty cool, if I remember correctly. I've, ha- I've had it on my kind of current playlist for the last week or so so i am enjoying that so yeah listeners if you don't know uh game time i I feel like they're from kansas city or somewhere like that carl apologies if that's wrong um but yeah they've got lots of cool songs that one with peter munters just over a year ago it's really good as well nice cool any other new releases uh let me i suppose we haven't talked about um the new uh alkaline trio stuff yes Yeah, yeah, I, I'm quite. I haven't enjoyed an Alkaline Trio new album for a while, and that one's uh, it's pretty decent. It hasn't. Some of the songs haven't had staying power with me, but the good songs are really good. Like the opening track, "Hot for Preacher," is absolutely yeah. bad. The chorus is awesome on that. It what just feels a little. It just feels a little bit different than than other releases, and I think, I think I said to you on 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 message that Al- Alkaline releases kind of always just felt a bit samey. Kind of, you never yeah. felt like you were getting anything new, whereas this has got a little yeah. bit of a, a fresh sound to it, you know. But still, you know, still kind of you clearly alkaline, but um, definitely just something a little bit different, and a little bit of a different direction. And who know? I don't know where that's come from. Maybe, maybe the blink blink element has you know changed. Change something. Change his songwriting in their approach process. a little bit, maybe. Yeah. 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 Although you know, you don't, you don't get blink from it. You, you don't really hear that. No. But, no. But maybe in terms of Matt's process, I don't know. But no, yeah. it's, it's yeah, it's been pretty good so far. It, it is cool. Oh, I'll tell you, I, I I've been enjoying Frank Turner's new stuff. He's put out two singles, I think, from his upcoming album. Most recent one called Do One, which uh, is sort of very high quality Frank Turner songwriting. I don't know if you've heard that, but uh, give that a listen for sure. Okay, cool. No, 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 I've heard that yet. And bleachers, you've got on the bleacher stuff. Uh, oh yeah, because we talked. Yeah, you, we talked about that, didn't we, in the last intro? Yeah, yeah, that's that's t- tiny moves. Yeah, uh, you you predicted correctly. I did love it. It's great. Yeah. yeah, very much looking forward to the self-titled bleachers album coming out soon. Yeah, when's that, Joe? Do you know? I think it's around the time they're over here, sort of late March, maybe. Cool. Yeah, I think I think we can leave it there for now. But um, let's get into today's guest. So today, I I had the pleasure of 
so I did this interview by myself, but it was one that I very much enjoyed doing by myself. It was Ingo, who's the singer for Do Nots, um, huge German punk rock band, or I guess they've kind of shifted away from punk rock a bit recently, but um, huge uh, band in Germany, um, kind of known in the scene a bit over here as well. And uh, he's an awesome guy, as you are about to hear. Here it is. This is not the usual time that you would usually record a podcast, is it? No. So, well, to be honest, we, I'd say like 90% of the the bands and artists we speak to are based in America. So uh -huh. it's normally sort of, uh, I normally sort of do early evening. So I suppose they'd be speaking to me at this time, their side, I guess. So Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, it's, 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 it's just, it's, it's kind of difficult to find like a, a good time frame. What with uh, having kids and taking them to school and kindergarten and all that shit. So yeah. Of course. So this is basically my downtime. So my kids, <laughs> they're, they're in school, they're away yep. for a couple of hours. So here I am. So yeah. It's all good. How old are your kids? Um, so my son, he's, he's uh, two and a half and our daughter, okay. she's um, eight, eight by now. So uh, okay. yeah. She she starts to do like preteen things, you know, like doing her own shit, and she, you know, tr tends to be grumpy sure. at times, you know. And, you yeah, know, and yeah. she'll be in a bedroom. She's like, yeah, don't don't even disturb me, blah blah blah, and you know, just slaps the door <laughs> and shit. And our son, he's just, you know, I mean, he's he's happy all the time. He's like, you know, Fireman Sam is his big thing. So that's oh, nice. <laughs> okay. You know, twenty four seven, he's like on like some fire department mission. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's been around a long time. I remember watching that when when I was around that age. So, uh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, thanks so much for for doing this. Um, so yeah, this this is the Wasting Time podcast, and like we've kind of been doing this about, I guess, like almost nine years now, and it's oh. kind of mainly focused on kind of punk and alternative artists. Nice. Start. We started in London, just like speaking to local bands, and then it's kind of growing into speaking to people like yourself all over the world so it's right uh on. it's great to have you here and uh, well, i'm chris by the way <laughs> right on yeah I'm, there's normally two of us that do this but yeah my co-host was it was a bit more difficult for him in the morning but I, I often do these solo as well so so yeah it's all good it's all good so i'm yeah i'm, I'm glad um we we found the time to do this because i know we were speaking a little bit at the back end of last year and so you were you were touring sort of around was it late November, December time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, so um, our, our current album has been out uh, almost a year now. It's, it, it came yeah. out in February, but like um, we had to split up the touring, uh, you know, the, just mainly because because I don't know if, if that's true of um, the UK as well, but in, in Germany and, and like mainland Europe, it's it's uh, it all boils down to um, – To get to getting like permissions from like the festivals that you book, like uh, mm -hmm. you know those open air festivals, the big ones, yeah. they, they're yeah. going to be like, hey, if if you're playing our big festival, there's no way you're going to play a club show, you know, ah, in like like yeah. three, Locally, three uh, yeah. months prior or after this thing. So that's ah, basically okay. because we had to, you know, shift uh, a couple of dates into like your know, winter and stuff. So so that's basically what we did. Is like you know trying to wrap everything up around summer so yeah oh i see so that was kind of so essentially they were like the leftover dates for, for like areas where you played the festivals in the exactly summer. yeah oh okay I'm, i mean i could be you know maybe i'm wrong on this but i'm in the uk i'm not aware that it works like that i mean at a lower level you know i know if you know a band's kind of you know that if they play like 100 cap venues or whatever you'll get um local promoters won't want them to be doing another show in that city you know yeah in the in the same month or whatever but no i haven't heard that with the with the bigger festivals doing that yeah that's, but that, that's really it's gotten a lot worse uh after corona because everybody like everybody yeah. uh, in the in the post-pandemic phase everybody's like um i'm trying to sell tickets here so uh you guys need to be exclusively on my festival so that's basically you know that that doesn't leave you a lot of choices you could either like skip those big festivals which yeah. you know it's, i mean it's you know it's it's so and so it's like it's like a decision that you have to make either way so we try to you know do you know best of both worlds but that means you know like like shifting shit away and you know like moving shit into another you know yeah. like season or something so yeah okay well i mean i totally see the logic in that so was that quite a nice way to kind of wrap up the year with a few oh yeah i guess it wasn't it wasn't that long a run if you were just doing the those 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 cities. now you know i mean the, the 
the funny thing is, or like like the, the beautiful thing right now is that so so this band is gonna be 30 in, in April. We're having our 30th yeah. anniversary. So it's been, you know, we've been around for quite a while. But um, it's a nice thing to say that, like, in the 30th year of our existence, we're playing the biggest shows, biggest festivals, biggest whatever uh, that we've ever done. So that means uh, we're not, like, playing, like, a six-week tour anymore. Like, we yeah. used to, back in the days when we, I don't know, we played, like, 300-cap um, venues. Nowadays, uh, over here in Germany especially, it's it's been exploding for us. That it's it's it, ever since we changed to the German language, yeah, um, that, yeah, yeah, that sort of like opened yet another door. So by now, oh, wow. um, those those um, shows were playing. I'd say the smallest that we did were like like one thousand five hundred, and it goes nice. up to like twelve thousand. Wow! So wow! Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's amazing, really, isn't it? If you as you say, you've been going since ninety four, and it's at a place now where you can kind of. It, it's sort of been always going in that direction, you know, because there would be so many bands who were like, yeah, you know, we had our peak around 2000 or whatever. And, but, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, so this band has sort of like renewed themselves, like in, in, you know, for like at certain points in our career, we were like, hey, let's try something new. Let's try, yeah. you know, and, and like, like view our style from a different perspective. Let's try, German lyrics for a change, blah blah blah, and that kind of refreshes everything, and and that keeps it keeps it very fresh and young for you, and so it doesn't yeah. feel like thirty years. And I suppose that is probably um, the reason why people are still following us, and like this is still growing because I don't know, maybe they perceive us as kind of a, like a new band to a certain extent. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Come to this in a little more detail in a little bit, but like obviously you've kind of you've changed your your musical. Not only you've put in the German the German lyrics, but like you've changed your musical style, you know, fairly yeah, substantially sure. at points, haven't you as well? So that probably helps with that. Yeah. Um, but uh, just just going back to the basics, I mean, obviously at the top of this, you were talking, saying how um, you managed to drop off your kids and stuff before before we jumped on this. But like, just curious, like, so where, when you're home from tour, what's what's an average day like for you? Well, I mean, we're we're running our own record label, so Solitary Man Records. That's our own label. It's, uh, we uh, started it in 2005 in Japan. Weirdly enough, strangely enough, because yeah. um, our band was having sort of like this momentum in Japan, where like. When we released a record over there, it went from zero to three in the charts with like Whitney Houston charting behind us. And wow! Which, like which, so which, like, which which record was that? Uh, it was uh, Amplify the Good Times and okay. uh, yeah, Pocket yeah. Rock. Those records back in the day. Okay. Yeah, 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 Got yeah. the noise, you know. And yeah. um, so that that's when we um, we had kind of you know like quite a following in Japan. And each and every time we would recommend bands um, in interviews. Um, those sales would go up <laughs> the week <laughs> wow. after. So, yeah. so um, yeah, the guys that did our publishing over there, they were like, "Hey, aren't you interested in like do, doing like sort of an intercontinental label? Like, so yeah. we're we're just gonna be the ones, uh, you know, dishing out the money, and you're you're um, doing the A and R shit, and you know, talking to bands and blah blah blah." So we got to release um, a couple of bands from all around the world that hadn't been available officially uh, in Japan. So we did, yeah. I don't know, which, we did. Which, uh, uh, yeah, go on. For instance, we did uh, Greatest Hits for the Toy Dolls. We did uh, Boy Sets Fire. We did Dropkick Murphys. Um, wow. Well, yeah, that, even Placebo that, and stuff wow. like that. Oh, really? So, yeah, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, so that was it, was, it was a weird setup. But um, when we... Um, so we we um, tried to get out of our own record contract over here in, in Europe because we felt wrongly represented by Sony BMG. So we were mm -hmm. signed to a sub label in the early two thousands. Uh, so yeah. we had to get a lawyer involved, and when they got us out of the deal, uh, we were like, "Hey, you know, DIY has always been a thing for us. Let's fucking let's import our own record label to Germany and do ourselves over here." So that's what we've been doing ever since. So yeah. Uh, which means there is a lot of uh, stuff that we need to do, you know, in between touring. There's, so my, my yeah. regular day is basically spent in front of the laptop, uh, you know, apart from, you know, taking care of my family and kids and all, is yeah. uh, doing a lot of labor work. So, yeah. Okay. Any any particularly exciting artists that are with the label at the minute? You, 
you know, do you want to? Well, basically, out? we're basically doing doing um, a lot of our own stuff. That's mainly the focus okay. over here. Um, we're uh, releasing a couple of uh, smaller bands from Germany, like Smile and Burn. They're a really uh, you you you'd love them. They're such okay. a great such a great punk rock band. Stuff like that, and um, helping you know a couple of other bands um, promote their shit too. So there's a German band called Sonderschule. I don't know if you heard about them. They're uh, like German sure, speaking, no. like say ska yeah. punk, but they're on the okay. verge of becoming like a stadium band over here as well. So you wow. know, stuff like that. Okay. We're doing stuff like that as well. Yeah. And then um, I suppose another another thing you do is it is it weekly? You have your radio show. It's every two weeks. Yeah. Every that's two been weeks. Going okay. on. Yeah, that's been going on for like what almost three years now and in the pandemic uh radio bob that's like the the biggest german private radio station when it comes to rock um they've reached out to me and they were like hey we're we're having a couple of uh singers from bands host their own radio show do you want to do it and um so they had like i don't know say ellis cooper uh rob halford those guys and um so they wanted me to get involved and i've been doing like some some you know commentary uh, blah 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 hosting of tv shows in germany as well like you know say from big festivals for like german television and stuff so right you know so you it got was that presenting experience of it then yeah so i had that one before but uh so radio was always on my bucket list but i was like hey i would love to do that but honestly if that means i have to play creed and nickelback and all that shit <laughs> shit then yeah yeah no thanks and they're like no 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 no. um we want you know the whole playlist every week uh every two weeks we want it to be your playlist like three hours and i'm like Amazing. guys i'm not quite sure if that's a good idea and, and they're like hey <laughs> Toss a possible playlist into a direction and we'll see. And so I was trying to test them. I was like, okay, let's see. Uh, let's uh, put on some minor threat. Let's put on some cannibal corpse. Let's put on, you know, it's, it's a different, you know, different shit. Yeah, yeah. And you just, you know, toss it into the direction. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to get a nice email back. And they're going to be like, yeah, that's probably not what radio should be like <laughs> in Germany. But all of a sudden I have this playlist and they're like, that's brilliant. That's exactly what we want. So every two weeks on Thursday nights, I get to play like three hours of, you know, whatever music I feel like playing could be death metal, could be old school, hardcore, whatever. So yeah, it's good. No, it's cool. I mean, I've seen you cause you, I know you share the playlists on Instagram. So I, I see the kind of stuff you play and it is very cool. And also I need to, personally thank you because um separate from this i was i was working with the band i'm not working with them anymore i mean no i mean it's all all no bad bloods good vibes still love them but you played uh love breakers for me oh, yeah, i reached yeah, yeah. out yeah reached out to you about love breakers and you were very uh very gracious and helped them out a lot i think i think you played them a couple of times at least oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're, they're brilliant seriously i love them a lot it's a great band that they, they, they sort of remind me of the replacements at times yeah that's a big influence for them for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so so yeah i mean the, the perfect fit for that for that kind yeah. of um audience and and so radio bob they they you know Throughout the day, like every single minute, they have like half a million listeners. So that's wow. like kind of it's that's it's, it's good exposure for, for those bands. Yeah, and and I always, you know, I'm I'm of course I'm playing the classics, but I always, uh, you know, want to at least help out people as much as I can. So you know, dishing out some support into their direction should be a good thing, I suppose. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know it was it was hugely appreciated by them, and it's funny they're yes. actually I think Germany's become their sort of biggest audience they're actually over there at the minute and like it's where they nice. keep going to tour and stuff there because it's always kind of receptive to jet you know sort of punk music in in general you know but you know what what's so funny i don't know if you experience it the same way but ever since brexit and all it's it's gotten so much more difficult in both directions to go and play because yeah. um i mean we did it with the do not like a couple of times we went to uh, the uk and it was always a good time we've been there with like mill and colin and anti-flag back in the day yeah yeah yeah. sorry to cut sorry to cut in but yeah i was i was at the uh, mill and colin one 2002 i, I remember at brixton right. academy yeah 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 that you know that and and afterwards we did um we did uh a hot water music tour we did oh, a did tour you? with three colors red yeah and, and stuff like that oh, so, okay. and it's always yeah. It's not always a good time, but you know it's tough for us to come back. What with like you know the costs and all, it's uh, yeah. It, and I can only I can only uh, imagine that it's it's even more difficult for bands from the UK trying to break over here. 
So yeah. 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 And and since Brexit, there's a lot more paperwork and hoops to jump through and stuff that just w- weren't there before. Yeah. It is uh yeah, it is tough. It is tough. But you know, I think I think Germany is such a well, for a band like Love Breakers and bands in that genre, I think Germany is such a good market and it's it's it all, is, it's always yeah. worth jumping through those hoops and organizing that tour. Oh yeah. You mentioned obviously last February was your last kind of full release. How how how, how How's that been received with the fan base? I'm guessing well in the fact that you've saying you've been doing this big tour this year and stuff. Yeah, it's been it's been our first number one record in Germany, and and that's congratulations. Even more, yeah, thank you so much. And that's even you know more rewarding knowing that we've uh, done it on our own label. So you know, Solitary Man Records is just basically it's us plus like um, um, a good friend of ours, uh, and she does like the office work uh, with uh, our guitarist, who's also the manager in the band. So it's it's basically uh, we're okay. we're doing okay. everything as DIY as possible. So um, long story short, we're not like like we we're not having like a, a huge budget that we could spend on marketing on promotion and, and shit. It's basically, yeah. here's the record. Um, these are our ideas and, and let's try and make them stick somehow. And like knowing that, um, like we, we, we went to number one with that record in Germany. Um, knowing that that Sony and Universal had artists out in that week and they spend some three to 400 grand yeah. on those bands to, to, yeah. to make it to the, you know, to the top five uh, positions. Yeah, yeah. That's even more rewarding because we're oh, like, hey, for no, sure. look at us. I mean, <laughs> yeah. with our bullshit label and our bad ideas, <laughs> if that works out with number one, well, thank you. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Um, can I just real quick take you back to the early days of the band and obviously yeah. uh, let's not walk through you know we, we have limited time this morning and you've been going for 30 years so there's quite quite a lot of ground there but like we'll do a quick walk through if that's cool with you i just yeah, sure. so so you formed you formed in 94 and you formed <laughs> it with with your brother right yeah, Guido, um, our guitarist, he's my brother. And um, so everybody else is basically from the scene around Ebenbüren, which is like a small remote town. Uh, yeah. It's close to Münster, like 140 yeah. kilometers away from Cologne, maybe like 200 kilometers away from Cologne. That you know, So northwestern Germany, like pretty close to the Dutch border, actually. That's where, yeah. we, that's where we started out. And um, we basically started as like... A, you know, just teenagers being bored. And uh, yeah, so basically n- none of us could play their instruments. We <laughs> started from scratch and, you know, started covering bands that we love, like the Sex Pistols, like Bad Religion, uh, Nirvana yeah. and stuff like that. And, it, you know, took it f- from there. And and basically, you know, I don't know, f- for some reason it worked out really quickly that we could well booking worked a lot for us uh i did it myself back in the days and you know i was on, on the phone basically 24 7 trying to reach out to clubs that i knew had bigger bands play and i was like yeah. hey can we be the support band blah 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 so um that worked a lot in in like various cities in germany and that got us some exposure so um yeah ever since we've been doing like two diy records before we got signed to uh gun records supersonic which is a division of sony and bmg in the late 90s and that's when everything really took off and then uh two or three years later uh burning hard from sweden they licensed uh, records of ours for the rest of europe and at the same time japan uh sony bmg um decided to to re-release and release stuff of ours and that's when shit over there exploded and yeah since 2008 we've been doing ourselves over here um we've been well basically touring of course europe and japan quite a quite a couple of times uh and also we did um america um every now and then like so flog and molly took us yeah. out for like you know some touring which which was very very helpful cj from the ramones uh is a friend of ours so he took us out nice. uh, on the east coast and stuff like that so we've gotten some exposure there as well and s- since 2014 we've uh, we've changed to the german language and that's when shit really took off in germany like even germany. more so yeah and yeah. that's where we are right now what are you how how popular are you in america is it is it sit- How's and how's that 
compared to the UK? Is it is it similar to both countries, or do you have a bit more of a following in one? Would you say? I reckon. Well, I reckon that like America is just so freaking big that yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's, I don't know. I, I suppose that like say uh, California is should be good for us but like yeah it's it's not like we're we're there like every year so the last thing that we've done over there was like uh, probably what like six years ago when we did the flog and molly cruise from miami around the bahamas with rancid and frank tuna and stuff yeah i bet that was fun was it yeah it was it was fun it was it was weird to a certain extent yeah. as well but you know the plane on a ferry like on the bermuda triangle and shit that's <laughs> it's, it's kind of weird uh, it's yeah. kind of unreal uh, and way too many drinks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was a good time. So yeah, for sure. So yeah, Flog and Molly is they've been so supportive of ours uh, over there. So yeah, that's cool. And like I can because I'm thinking of my, my you know obviously I mentioned I saw you guys at Brixton Academy in O2, but I was I was familiar with you before that. I think my first exposure to you guys was uh, so when we used to have the satellite TV get German channels, and there was one music channel, and I remember just randomly having that on and and hero hero was playing i was just like oh this oh, yeah, sounds yeah. like this sounds like one of my bands oh they're german <laughs> okay cool cool and Cheers. then i i think that's how i first first knew you and then i i think like you did some tours with maybe maybe midtown came over and supported you or something like that because i was yeah, heavily into midtown out. yeah we took them out and and then we did a tour together in japan so they're good friends of ours and oh, yeah. and so yeah, like you said, like like that German uh, music television thing that was helping a lot. And you know, yeah. in the late nineties, um, you know, when internet wasn't a thing like yet, um, like everybody got their exposure from like say zines and magazines and blah blah blah. And the other thing that it would be would be MTV and German music television called Viva yeah. and Viva Two. So those those channels helped us a lot. You know, spread the word. Uh, throughout Europe, so yeah, it's funny. My, uh, I'm I'm friends with uh, a guy called Peter who used to sing in. Do you remember a band called Over It? I'm sure he's he's yeah, yeah of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, when did you tour? Where where did you tour with Over It? Because we, we didn't. I don't think, oh, we didn't. Oh, you just no, kind of no. They they've reached out to us a couple of times because uh, uh, is it Nick Nick Bailey? Uh, Nick Bailey, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, now, now a song like a pop songwriter now, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So he's been reaching out to me back in the days already. He's like, "Hey, we're huge fans of you guys. We need to tour together." Oh, and okay. so we've been we've basically been updating each other. And, hey, what, what are you guys up to these days? Blah 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 blah. And but it never worked out that we we play together. But well, oh, I see. Um, okay. Actually, Nick, Nick, he uh, he reached out to me like say half a year ago again, and he's like, I, "I've got a couple of songs laying around. Do you guys want to try and use them?" <laughs> and, <so laughs> and I'm like, "Hey, man, that's 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 super nice, but I mean, we're good, but um, but but that's such a nice offer." So he's he's basically, uh, yeah, like you said, he's he's kind of like this. 24 7 songwriter for other bands and he's very very talented he's just yeah 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 he does he's, yeah he's been working on some big stuff i've noticed so he's yeah he's doing he's doing really well um yeah it's uh i feel like over it were a band that never quite had the moment they should have done you know they're they're, they're that band for a lot of people my age it was just like oh over it should have been bigger you know but it happens a lot though yeah, but they, I mean, yeah, like like you said, there's like so many bands out there that deserve a bigger audience, but for some reason yeah. it doesn't, you know, there's not every band has momentum. It's got a lot to do with like, have, you know, just getting lucky and shit. I mean, that, you know, it, <laughs> life's unfair. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, you got to be in the right place at the right time and stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we touched upon it before, but um, obviously throughout, and this is, this, this should happen throughout a 30 year career but like you've kind of your music style kind of shifted it so is there a place where we can pinpoint where that happened and i presume that was a conscious thing like were you what what was the thinking behind that because well it kind of so noticeably when... went sort to, to me sort of pop punk to a sort of you know more straightforward punk however you want to call it but there was mm -hmm, a definite mm -hmm. shift at one point yeah yeah, like I said, like in 2004, we released a record called Got the Noise. And yeah. by that time, uh, we had a feeling that we sort of knew every ingredient that was uh, yeah. necessary to, you know, play a pop punk song. And that, yeah. that that's when that's when sh shit just got a little, I don't know, repetitive, maybe yeah. uh, redundant in a way. 
And we were like, ah, oh, geez, this doesn't really challenge us anymore. Blah, 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 blah. Um, it's been, it's been in our DNA for like forever. And I like, even today, like to, in the, you know, this very morning I woke up and the first thing I did was uh, check out the new Green Day record, obviously. And, and oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, they're, they're friends of yours as well, right? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. They're, they're going to take us out again this summer, so, which is going to be awesome. Can't wait. Um, so yeah, that's always been in our DNA, but also a lot of like the harder shit and like, you know, the most straightforward uh, stuff. So when we uh, when we uh, got a lawyer involved to get us out of the deal with BMG Sony, that was uh, yeah. shortly after Got the Noise was released. We were sick of that style to a certain extent. We were sick of being signed to that label and misrepre- being misrepresented and all. And it took us like two years probably to get out of the deal finally. And mm-hmm. when that happened, um, a friend of ours who plays in a band called Blackmail, I don't know if you ever heard of that band. Uh, what was it? Blackmail? Blackmail, yeah. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. You might want to compare them to, say, a German smashing pumpkins. Okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah. Very international. Very th- That guy is probably the biggest genius I've ever met when it comes to songwriting and guitarists, uh, being a guitarist and shit. So um, he, Kurt Ebelhäuser, that's his name, he reached out to us and he's like, you know what, you guys, you're an amazing live band and I love you as people, but all your records plainly suck. You know, like everything oh. you've done is shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I can do it better because yeah, he's been producing other bands. How did you feel when he, when he put it like that? Yeah, yeah, we're from, we're, 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 I mean, we're Westphalians, so we're, we love it when people talk straight that's that's basically <laughs> that's that's yeah. a thing you know like like yeah. we don't we don't love to be sweet talked and blah 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 so yeah. Yeah. it basically it was a challenge it's like okay really well come on bring it motherfucker so yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, we went into his studio and he's like let's do a demo session let's do three or four songs together and i'll show you what you guys can sound like and that's when everything became so much more well decent to a certain extent and like yeah uh i don't know maybe more courageous and more experimental in a way and what we let go of those typical you know feats that say uh pop punk would have you know like yeah because it is redundant it is repetitive to a certain extent and we're like probably we need something new and that's when we started developing new trademarks and we were super surprised and astonished and and happy to hear that our sound could you know could also be uh, viewed from a different perspective so yeah you might want to call it like a little more indie at that time or like yeah like more straightforward punk rock um but that really opened doors for us i mean it slammed doors shut in our face as well because everybody had sort of had their perception of our band and we when we uh renewed our sound and released that new record everybody's like really that's you oh, i'm not sure what i'm if i if i like it or not or not or not you know do you think some some fans kind of walked away at that point then yeah probably yeah and and that's uh, around that time like 2008 2009 was like the uh worst turnouts that we've ever played like in in like really yeah in our career so it, it went down to like say i don't know maybe like 80 people in leipzig so at, at like a friday night really? you're like fuck but but we yeah. were so um so, so persuaded so convinced that this was a good record and we're like hey you know what let's spend you know the last part that we have and uh, and and invest this into this record because we love it it's good and we want people to know it and so um there's a song on there called stop the clocks which is like the yeah, yeah. probably the softest song that, that we've done or one of the softest songs that we've done is you might want to compare it to say blur or some band like yeah, that yeah, maybe, yeah 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 guitars and all yeah, yeah and um all of a sudden that song took off so we we reached out to like radio stations ourselves. We reached out to TV stations ourselves. We're like, hey, g- g- seriously, please, it, 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 you know, if anything, please listen to this just for once. If you think it's trash, then you know, just throw it away. But please give it a listen. Um, and, and so they did because because they knew our band from back in the days, and they were like, okay, yeah. kind of interesting to see where you're going. And all of a sudden, it's gotten the biggest exposure that we've ever gotten in in all the time being the do nots and um 
eventually it, it so happened that like even radio stations uh were keen on playing it so we got maximum rotation on pretty much every radio station on all the tv uh music stations and shit and that basically helped us uh overcome you know that that really bad time with the band and yeah. start everything new and that's when everything went to a, a much bigger level so yeah really? so, so that song was really important in your career then i guess yeah that um, even got nominated by uh, for german radio prize as the uh best song in 2008 and stuff like that so it's it all of a sudden we were exposed to a complete new audience like you know we still had the punk kids with us but like a lot of people were like really those that's the do nots uh, that's interesting and so yeah so that's when everything took off uh, for us again Oh, that's so interesting. Okay, and and yeah, that you can see if you go on Spotify or whatever, that's by far your most popular song to this yeah, day it is. still. So yeah. it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? If you'd stayed more in the lane you were in, like because some bands do that, you know, we, you could. I'm sure we could both think of a couple of bands who've been going for thirty years who haven't changed their style so much. I like. I wonder how popular you would be today if you'd kept making music. Well, you know like, what? I um, think got the noise and stuff. You know. Yeah, I think. I think we wouldn't be in, around anymore because we'd probably gotten bored of ourselves. That's the one yeah. thing. Oh, okay, yeah. But yeah. I don't know if if if, uh, if you would agree, but to my mind, only the pioneer bands of a style get away with recording the same record over and over again. Say Ramones, say ACDC, say Bad Religion, stuff like that. You wouldn't want them to sound any other way. Yeah, but no like, effects or someone as well. I yeah, suppose. yeah, yeah. But 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 like every other band, like like there's so many bands out there that do that '90s melody core style nowadays, and it just you know slowly they slowly drive themselves into the ground because there's no such thing as like, uh, you know, they don't evolve at all, and and yeah. you just reach out to the same people over and over and over again, which is I mean that that might be. Uh, a career if you want it to be uh, you know if you wanted it should to be that way but we try yeah. to you know always we try to to surprise ourselves and still um yeah. have a feeling that we're still relevant to ourselves basically yeah 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 what's what's your audience like these days do you is, it, is there like a wide age range like yeah. or is, okay yeah that's, definitely that's you might you might want to compare that to say uh the audience that maybe green day draws you might want oh, to compare right, okay. it to yeah. the audience that uh die toten hosen and die erste draw those those guys are like the biggest two german rock and punk rock bands of all time mm -hmm. so um but the, i mean they're filling stadiums like easily like 60 to eighty thousand people that's you know it's a no-brainer so basically what they the, the audience they draw is probably the same that we do it's like um Obviously, I mean, the front row kids would be, I don't know, probably like, what, like 16 to 18 or something. And then we have a lot of like, like mid 20 guys. And in the back, uh, those guys are parents by now and they take yeah, all yeah. their kids to our shows. So yeah, it's it's a yeah, wide range between days. 16 yeah. and 60 is everything in there. So yeah. That's what you want. That's what you want. Definitely. Yeah. I, I, think, it, I think it's great when there's a band who's been going for as long as you guys that kind of doesn't just have the audience that kind of just grew up with them the whole time, you know? Yeah, I, I use I usually call that that like I'm really I'm really happy we're not Jethro Tull. I mean, yeah. don't get me yeah. wrong, no no offense, but you know they course, draw yeah, yeah. the same audience like they've been drawing the same audience since for, like forty years or for forty yeah. years or something, and. I mean, our audience grow, you know, grows older with us, but there's like you know there's kids coming after yeah. uh, who will also attend, which is good. Yeah, yeah, no, that's really cool. Um, obviously, um. In, during the period we were just discussing before, like you have the song with Frank Turner. You mentioned Frank Turner being on that cruise with you mm -hmm. as well. It's like, is he still a good friend of yours? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, so much. Like that, we're we're sending each other like WhatsApp messages pretty much every day. And uh, oh really? I don't know okay. when this. I don't know when this podcast is coming out. When, pro when, when do pro you... probably a week a week a week from now? If I if I if if, if I stay on top of it, yeah, probably okay, about so, next so weekend. Gonna... I'm not going to spoil it, but there might be something more happening with Frank in really okay. a couple of weeks. So yeah. Oh, okay, okay. We'll look out for that. That's exciting. Right. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah, Frank. Frank, we've had Frank on the show before. Um, very, yeah, yeah, he's, he's one of, he's one of my, my dearest friends. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we met because uh, a friend of ours, uh, a mutual friend, who uh, he uh, he booked some shows uh, in Germany. 
uh, and he did Million Dead, Frank's old band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. and when Million Dead was done, he's like, "Hey, Frank, that singer uh, of Million Dead, he's he's doing like singer songwriter solo stuff by now. I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you in the loop." I was like, "Yeah, why not?" And then so he he um he sent me some stuff, and I was like, "This is really fucking good. This is really cool. I'm I can see that this guy is gonna go places." Uh, yeah. Yeah, because you know you listen to a couple of people and you just know they have it, and you know exactly. that there's like a career, uh, you know, waiting for them to just you know explode in their face, and that's pretty much what happened. Like I don't know, like maybe a year after, and so we reach out to him in 2012 for like a duet of a song called yeah. "So Long." Yeah. And um, ever since we've been friends, so yeah, yeah, we've been shooting a video in London and hanging out and. We took him out over here a couple of times, and so you yeah. know, it's yeah, it's 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 a friendship, and much more than just a professional relationship that you would have with a couple of bands. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's very cool. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny you mentioned the whole when you hear something something new, and like you know when someone has it. Is there any other examples over the years where you heard a band or an artist early on? You're just like, they have that special thing, and they've gone on to. Well, well there's a there's a German band called Leoniden. Not sure if you've heard of them. They're they're doing uh, the UK so, a no. couple of yeah, a couple of times. The uh, uh, they've been doing the UK a couple of times already. Um, so they started out being this band, this weird band that sounded like say at the drive-in, but oh yeah, yeah, a lot more poppy in a way. But you know the same the same weirdness and the same you know rhythm weirdo shit going on but like poppier and and yeah. we we're like those guys one of those days and yeah next thing you know they they changed their singer and ever ever since they've gotten huge over here in, in germany so yeah that's one of the those examples as well it's funny it's funny that there's there's a couple of artists that that everybody that everybody has the same feeling about right yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. it's 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 in the DNA, and you can't even get your head around what it is exactly that makes them so magical. But like, if they have this, that thing, it's just yeah, there, yeah. and you can't yeah. buy it for money. Your former style of music was very much in the pop punk lane, mm -hmm. and like we've talked about a few, we've mentioned throughout this like a few bands of that genre, but um, they're all kind of legacy bands or bands who've been at, around a while. Do you have any kind of um, eye on what's going on in that kind of type of music these days like is there any bands that have impressed you who one would describe as just a straight up pop punk band like or do you kind of are you because that's in the past is that not something you really pay attention to because like looking at the, your playlist I'm sure I saw a couple of things that could be classified as that yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm always curious to find out if there's something new that really fascinates me and blows me yeah. away. But I'll be honest with you, uh, it's basically it's the old records over and over again that really yeah. still impress me, and and yeah, the, yeah. you know the records that and the bands that have just done it better and earlier and and stuff. Um, I mean, there's a couple of bands out there, uh, like new bands, which I really like, uh, but. Uh, like like my 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 own musical taste has shifted a bit. Sure, so let's sure. say nowadays I'm a lot more interested in bands like say I don't know bands like Fucked Up bands. Oh like, yeah yeah yeah. Um, I don't like even uh, stuff like The National and and shit mm -hmm. like that. So it's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, yeah. Uh, and like the, you know, I'm I'm a huge fan of old school hardcore. Uh, yeah. You know, in the vein of say, I don't know, Kid Dynamite, uh, yeah. Gorilla Biscuits, that stuff. Okay. Um, so the last band that really, let me think, last band that really blew me away uh, is Homefront. Okay. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. That band from uh, Edmonton in Canada. Yeah, yeah. They they sort of they sort of combine say the clash say fucked up with uh the cure and echo and the bunny men and, and stuff yeah, it's a it's cool a sound they have. Mix. Yeah. but that that band really blew me away but when it comes to pop punk i mean of course i pay attention and i know that say bands like neck deep are huge by now but yeah i can i can check them out i, I like them okay when i see them but that's not something that i would put on uh myself well, at home yeah, and be yeah, like yeah. okay i want to listen to this right now it, yeah. you know the, Green Day is still a thing for me. Um, I'm looking forward to next week when uh, the new Alkaline Trio record is coming out. Stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you have you talked with Alkaline Trio before? 
No, we haven't, but uh, we've, uh, well, uh, I bumped into Matt a couple of times. He visited us when we played um, Hollywood once. That's when he attended a show of ours because uh, we have a couple of mutual friends. And mm -hmm. last time I've met uh, Skiba uh, in person was when we played with Blink-182 when he was in the band, when we played a festival together in uh, oh, Switzerland. Nice. So we oh, cool. hang out that okay. day. So yeah, he's a good guy. Love him. Okay. Do you, do you still know the Blink guys a little bit? Because you, you talked with them like way back in the day, didn't you, I think? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's not like we're we're best friends and like yeah. we're being on yeah. the phone like every other week or so. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but it's it's always nice to bump into them again on festivals and stuff. So um yeah. I did when they when they uh got back together in two thousand what was it, nine or something, after that yeah. first breakup kind of thing. Yeah. Um I uh I interviewed Tom DeLong for German television. Oh and wow, okay. That thing, that that very interview that blew up. I don't know. For some reason it it got it went viral. And and ever since uh I don't know if we play with it's just an airwaves or blink, or he's always like, Hey man, good to see you again, uh, blah blah blah, cool. stuff that's like that. Cool. So yeah, he's a good guy. Nice, nice. Um, Ingo, I think uh, we could probably because I've taken up a fair bit of your time on this Friday morning. Yes. We can do, we can probably wrap up in a sec. We normally finish these with just like some kind of generic quick fire questions. So uh -huh. if it's, if it's cool, can yes, maybe please. I'll, uh, I'll throw some of those at you. I haven't really written them down. So I'm just going to kind of make them up as I go along and based on previous ones we've asked. So let's, let's keep it real simple. To start with favorite TV show. Oh, Fuck, you got me here already. <laughs> uh, probably Stranger Things. Now, that's not a TV show, is it? The, uh, Netflix, oh, yeah, does yeah, it count? Um, yeah, that counts. Yeah, Because yeah. uh, I love everything that's like 80s, 80s related and like yeah, yeah, everything yeah, yeah. that has like uh, kids, you know, being, you know, being together and, 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 and fighting evil. Like say the Goonies, say yeah, Stand yeah. By Me. I, I sort of have, I have a soft spot for that. So probably Stranger Things would be, would be a thing, yeah. Nice. Uh, favorite type of food? Oh, uh, everything vegetarian and vegan. So pasta nice. is always a good thing. But yeah, if if it doesn't have any eyes, I'm very very happy. <laughs> I approve of that. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not vegan. Vegetarian though. I like I, I, Ger Germany always has like a very good vegan scene. Where, whereabouts in Germany are you based? I meant to ask that. That uh, uh, right the now top. I'm I'm where well, I'm living in Cologne these days. Oh, Cologne. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give you three previous guests that we've had on this show. And you're only allowed to keep the music of one of them. The other two you can never listen to again. <laughs> oh shit! So, uh, hey, you know they might be artists that you've never listened, never listened to. So, it might not be a problem. But I'm going to try and make it as difficult for you as I can. Oh, Let's. All right. So, I'm going to give you "Get Up, Kids," "Rise Against," and "Some 41." Oh, you can only keep the hell. music of one of them. <laughs> Seriously? Are you serious? Yep. Oh, I'm serious. Geez. Um. Now, okay, here's the catch. So, like, um, I basically know everybody in every band, and we, we've been playing Good. with everybody. Yeah, so that makes it you more know, awkward. I yeah, like this it. is so. So, whatever I'm going to say <laughs> from here on out is going to be offensive towards a couple of people. Um, well, let's say the closest friendship that we keep is uh, with Rise Against. So, Tim is. Okay. Uh, a very good friend of ours uh, and he's also been doing like you know guest vocals for us and we've been out touring with rise against and it's always a good time to hang out with them again um i'd probably say rise against but uh i have to admit that uh something to write home about from the get up kids is probably in my Classic. top 20 of all time so nice <sighs> That is sort of like it's it's difficult that you know uh, I'd have to you know flip a coin or something to to finally make a decision <laughs> when it comes to that. Uh, but you know what, friendship always uh, over music, so I, I'll stick with Rise Against and, and uh, yeah, nice. I guess nice. yeah, that would be my answer. Uh, top three artists of all time. Oh fuck you, man! Uh, or or, or cont contenders for it if you can't nail it down to three. Because to be fair, like off the top of your head, that's you know it's a difficult question. That's a super difficult question. Um, well, I can say that my favorite record of all time is American Three, Solitary Man by Johnny Cash. Mm -hmm. So he's probably up there. But then, you know, then you have to, you know, you have to divide it into into genres. I mean, uh, Metallica and Slayer have been super important to me just yeah. as much as The Clash, just as much as The Toten Olsen from Germany and... Oh, geez, man, that that question is impossible. That I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. That's like I, I could I could I could toss 
some 40 names at you at once and also say stuff like New Order, The Cure, even Cindy Lauper that has a big, uh, yeah, there's, there's a gold yeah, yeah. plate, you know, in my heart. <laughs> it says Cindy Lauper somewhere. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, I just, what one final question that I meant to ask before, just uh, what, how, how's the future for, for the band looking? Um, do you, what's, do you know what you kind of, I've got planned over the next year or couple of years. Is there anything you can kind of allude yeah, to? Yeah, like I said, uh, we're going to turn 30 this year. So there's sort yeah. of like some some celebrations obviously involved in celebrating that anniversary. So we're going to do a big hometown um, festival show in Munster in August. Uh, it's like a 12,000 capacity, which was sold out in less than 48 hours. Which oh, is like congratulations. That's awesome. The weirdest thing. Um, so yeah, Green Day is going to take us out uh, for a couple of dates this year, which nice. is going to be rad. Um, yeah. yeah, we're going to play uh, various size clubs this year, like from very tiny to pay tribute to the early days to, you know, yeah. the bigger stadium shit. Um, well, we're we're uh, recording some new stuff, uh, some old stuff, re-recording old stuff, you know, recording some new stuff. Um, okay. I can't let you in on that, like, too much yet. Fair enough. Uh, fair enough. Uh, so, yeah, um, that's going to happen. And um, well, the rest is basically, I don't know, it's it's, it's all up in the air. I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, if, if things progress in the way that they are working for us right now, then uh, we're going to get on people's nerves for at least 30 more years that's nice. I'm pretty sure of that nice yeah <laughs> so, why yeah. not why not um <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i think we can we can wrap it up there uh ingo like really appreciate your time again well, appreciate so the stuff me. outside of the outside of this that you did with love breakers um yeah no like um you're most welcome and uh yeah it's been been really cool to have you on the show and right uh, on well yeah. yeah so um you uh thanks everybody uh thanks for listening and you know thanks for the, the interest and all and um let's be in touch seriously like definitely definitely yeah yeah i will reach out to you soon i really appreciate this Whoa!